I'm Georgia and this is The Sound of Georgia. Today is going to be the final video in my Sound of Fictionalization series and today we're going to be talking about the supporting characters. Possibly the biggest singular departure in all of these adaptations of the Von Trapp story come from the supporting characters. Like the children, their names sometimes change depending on the adaptation and while they probably do have more character than the children, see the last video, it isn't always consistent. So the characters we're going to look at today are mainly going to be the captain's perfective fiance and the man who takes an interest in their singing. And we're going to touch a bit on the butler at the end. In the reality, the captain would be fiance was a woman named Princess Yvonne and she was a distant cousin of his first wife Agatha. Don't ask me how Agatha's family tree is beyond complicated. Reading her daughter's memoir, I could not for the life of me figure out how it went. Father Fines Wagner, on the other hand, arrived in 1935 after the family had converted their home into a boarding house. He was sent there to perform mass but heard the family singing at the breakfast table and decided right then and there to teach them. When they started singing professionally, he became their conductor. By 1938, he was like one of the family and by the time they realised they had to escape, they couldn't bear leaving him behind. So he came with them and continued to conduct them as they performed. So there's our brief backstory, let's get into the adaptations. We'll start with talking about the captain's fiancée. Depending on the adaptation, she is either called Yvonne or Elsa. But she's more well known as the princess, for Yvonne, and the baroness, for Elsa. Her ultimate plan is always to marry the captain, and the fact that this never comes to fruition is met with varying degrees of upset, but also usually a gracious exit. The afternoon she first arrived at the villa, she told Maria that the captain was in love with her, obviously fled off to the abbey, and at that point she disappears for a bit as well. She came back later, even though in the book it's only a few pages, just so that we can hear about how the captain broke things up with her. In the German film, she's got even less to do. She once again notices what's going on between the captain and Maria, and after the children have performed their shadow puppet performance, the precursor to the Lonely Goathood, she drags Maria upstairs and tells her exactly what she thinks. Pretty sure I mentioned it in one of the other videos, but the children come in midway through that scene and interrupt her escape. So the father finds out immediately. He then confronts Yvonne about whether she spoke to Maria. She asks him whether he thinks of Maria as simply the children's governess or more. He runs away without another word because of course he does, because we know how he feels, and Yvonne is never seen again. We have slightly more to go off of with the anime, but basically her character is just a drawn out version of what we read in the memoir. She's there in one episode and then she's gone the next and so on and so forth for about half the series until it ends where it always does. He won't marry her because he loves Maria and because of how long a period of time it takes in the anime, by the time it finally ends it's not a big deal to her at all. As for what happens with her in all those episodes, she doesn't really appear to be too interested in becoming a mother. There's one episode where the captain goes to visit her because she's sick and she starts openly talking to him about things like boarding school, as though it's something already set in stone even though she hasn't asked him. Obviously this is mentioned in Sound of Music but it also comes up in the memoir. Right after she tells Maria how the captain feels about her, she tells her she's going to need to hold a party for the children on the day of the wedding because obviously they're not going to be there and how she's found a couple of boarding schools that would be very good for them. So that brings us to Sound of Music. Elsa Schrader is completely different and exactly the same as Yvonne both at the same time. And just like Maria and the captain during the escape, she changes dramatically depending on whether you're looking at the stage or the screen. Like Yvonne, she's a distinguished Viennese socialite who only wants to marry the children's father and is not interested in them at all. On stage, she's the president for her late husband's business empire. That doesn't count for much. And she seems slightly more maternal than her film counterpart, but she definitely still holds the children at an arm's length. But more than anything else, in the musical, she and Max serve as a window to the political situation and themes of the show. Her relationship with the captain is not necessarily politically instigated, but it is definitely politically dependent. The captain finds out her feelings on the growing situation with the Nazis 
also notes it's not going to work and breaks the engagement off. On to the film. The film is the first time that she was the Baroness. On stage she was simply Frau Schroeder, and even in the musical now she's still just called Frau Schroeder. But if you were to look at the cast list it would say the Baroness. In the film the political aspect was done away with and we have the pseudo love triangle, following her character more from the Trap Family and the memoir. In the film she is the one to confront Maria about her feelings towards the captain, leaving her to, yeah you know, she runs away. In the musical Brigitte is the one who tells Maria that her father's in love with her, but the film follows the Trap Family and what we see in Maria's memoir and has Elsa do it. And then after Maria's come back, when the captain breaks off the engagement, she doesn't push it. She's clearly upset, but she doesn't push it. Across all the adaptations, her name is usually the biggest difference. Fans of the stage version of Sound of Music feel like she got a bad deal in the film because her song was all cut and her character was slightly changed. And I get that. I like her more in the musical too. I don't hate her in the film, not by a long shot, but how can love survive and no way to stop it? Oh my god I love those songs. I made the right decision cutting them but oh my god I love them. But putting differences like that aside, across all the adaptations her story and character arc is roughly the same. Let's talk about Max. Max appears only in The Sound of Music. It's pretty clear that he's known both the captain and Elsa for a little while and is very much invested in their relationship. And when Elsa's in the storyline they're almost inseparable especially in the musical. That's another reason why I like Elsa better in the musical. She and Max just play off each other perfectly. There's something about their relationship in the musical that the film just doesn't have. After hearing the children sing, whenever that may be, he is desperate and determined to get them into the festival. The captain denies him again and again and he eventually goes behind his back when he and Maria are off on their honeymoon and enters them anyway. Obviously the captain's not happy about it, but it's the only way that they'll get out of the country alive, so he goes with it. As I said, Max appears only in The Sound of Music. Franz of Hammerstein took little to no real life influence when creating his character. Mother Franz was not, was not an impresario, he was a priest. And while he did take an interest in their singing, as I said earlier, he became their teacher and then their conductor and then eventually fled the country with them. In the German film he arrives at the house right before the family's financial distress. He's there to ask about the church organ but he forgets all that when he hears Maria and the children singing. Maria asks if he would like to be their teacher and he starts teaching them right then and there. He's shown as the conductor at their first public performance but after that we don't see him again until they've escaped. He does flee with them like in reality but we don't actually see him in the scene where they're leaving. When they're on Ellis Island he's called into the office of the detaining centre and he's told that he is free to stay in America. When he finds out the family haven't been granted approval to stay in America he says he's not going to leave them. I mentioned in the other video how they did their impromptu performance that wins them their freedom and he of course is the one who conducts this. He joins in at one point and then we see him again in the final scene where they're having their first public performance in America. That of course grows into helping the family sing and when the option of the festival comes up he thinks they should take it. He doesn't conduct them in that first performance but he does in the future and of course that leads once again to him escaping with them. So while Father Franz Wozniak is very much the same in all the adaptations he and Max could not be more different. The differences between them are far more obvious and extreme than the differences between the Baroness and the Princess. The only connection between these two characters is that they take an interest in the family singing. Max really is the Sound of Music's mirror to Father Franz Wozniak only by default. So we've got those ones out of the way, so let's talk a bit about the butler. The biggest change with him is his name. In reality his name was Hans. In the anime his name is Hans. In The Sound of Music and the German film his name is Franz. He's always in league with the Nazis because he really was in league with the Nazis. The Sound of Music is the only adaptation where he doesn't admit it outright himself but the short conversation he has with Rolf and the moment where he's staring out the window while they're trying to escape says everything. That is actually one of my favourite moments in the entire movie because it's just so simple and powerful and it tells you everything. According to Agatha's book Despite his allegiances, in reality he actually alerted them to the fact that the borders were being closed and that really helped them in their escape. The anime follows this almost to the letter and in the German film he covers for them when the police arrive. 
Unfortunately, Rogers and Hammerstein offer him no redemption. And of course, for a final little point, there was Baroness Matilda. But I'm not really going to talk about her too much because A, her portrayals are wildly uneven, depending on the adaptation, and B, I hate her. In Sound of Music, she is obviously replaced by Frau Schmidt, whose role is tiny in the musical and even smaller in the film. Her role in the German film is pretty much exactly the same. She's just kept her original name. Really, it's the anime where we see her the most. And the reason I hate her. She is horrible. She's in the anime for about three quarters of it and she has a big role. She hates Maria. She hates that the children aren't acting like aristocratic children and she wants the captain and Yvonne to get married. Also, she looks like this. Matilda? I don't think so. That's Miss Trunchbull. And that's everything for today, guys. And here endeth the final video in my The Von Traps and The Sound of Fictionalization series. I don't really know how to wrap up this series the way I did with my final essay. So I'll let you just watch all the videos in order and draw your own conclusions. But I hope you enjoyed watching this series. Let me know in the comments if you've seen any other adaptations that aren't Sound of Music and which was your favourite and what did you think. I hope you guys are all staying safe. Feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in my video next week. So long, farewell!